What's up, folks? This is Justin from Books, Bricks, and Boards. A couple of weeks ago, I did a video on AD&D's second edition. I talked about a lot of the settings during that video, but I didn't say much about one particular setting that is actually one of my favorites. There was a reason for that. I was in the process of converting that setting over to Savage Worlds. So today, I'm going to share how I would play Dark Sun in the Savage Worlds core rule set. But before I get into that, I wanted to just say we reached 3,500 subs this week. Thanks for that. And it's only by your subscriptions, your viewership, your comments, and other engagement that I'm able to continue to do this. So please, if you enjoy the content, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And stick around to the end of the video if you want to get a copy of my conversion process to be able to play on a savage desert world in a fantasy setting. Without any further ado, let's get into it. Conan, what is best in life? To crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and to hear the lamentation of the women. Back in the early 90s, everything was extreme. The fastest growing sports craze was the X Games. The in-your-face extreme, for the time anyways, programming on MTV was a siren song for a wayward youth. The music was alternative, because traditional just wasn't edgy enough. It only seems natural that TSR would want to appeal to that extreme element with its product lines, and that is where Dark Sun came in. Everything about it was off-brand for the traditional settings. The Brahm artwork that would feel equally at home on a metal album, the heavy use of psionics, the lack of dragons in Dungeons & Dragons, except for the one, of course, which itself was weird and different. The survival aesthetics, the bone and stone equipment, only balanced by the toughest iron characters. With half-giants, half-dwarves, mantis men, and cannibal halflings, it was clear that we aren't on Oerth anymore, or even Faerun. Heck, even humans could start with a 20 in every attribute. When you add an equally metal story about the greatest half-dwarf in fiction helping to lead a revolution against an all-powerful sorcerer king, you may have the single most 90 setting that TSR could have made. The thing is, Dark Sun, since the 90s, has received very little love from the powers that be. Sure, there were Dragon Magazine articles to play in 3rd edition and a weak attempt to revive for the 4th edition, but largely, Athos has been left unloved. I can abide this no more. So if you would like to dig out your old Dark Sun box set or pick up the excellent drive through RPG reprint and put it to good use, or create your own spiritual successor post-apocalyptic sci-fi fantasy wasteland, I'm going to share the way that I do it at my table. This is my take on the genre of post-apocalyptic sci fantasy for Savage Worlds. I call it Savage Sun. There was not as much work to be done here as I expected when I started this project, as the Savage Worlds Fantasy Companion actually has a set of setting rules suggested for a game such as Dark Sun. I took those and tweaked them a little bit, as well as adding some of my own for my own savage post-apocalyptic game. This could be set on Athos or your own home savage world setting. So if I were going to play a game that was going to play very similar to Dark Sun, right. this is how I do it. I would use Born a Hero from page 136 of the core rulebook, Conviction, also on page 136, Creative Combat, page 137, Dumb Luck, page 138, Dynamic Backlash, page 138, and Unarmored Hero, page 141. Born a Hero allows characters to take edges that they don't meet the requirements for at character creation, which gives the feel of powerful characters, which was common to that genre. Conviction is like a super Benny that can be earned through tragedy or triumph. Creative combat is, in my opinion, the best way to do combat and allows creative... You keep using the horde. 
use of different skills other than the traditional fighting skills during your games. Dumb Luck allows players to spend a Benny even if they critically fail, and that's going to come into play later when I get to my special setting rules that I've created. Dynamic Backlash creates interesting consequences for failed spellcasting, and Unarmored Heroes allows you to play without wearing armor and still feel like you have a fighting chance. This is going to be important also for some of my custom setting rules that I've created. Speaking of those custom special rules, here they are. Psionic Savants. In my game, each wild card starts with the arcane background Gifted Edge. The GM has final say on if the chosen power is acceptable as not all of the powers would be easily representative of a psionic savant. Second, dehydration. Each scene that a character exerts more than normal effort, such as running, carrying heavy objects, or fighting, for example, while in the desert heat, they must make a vigor check, subtracting one for the roll for every point of worn armor. This does not affect the mantis men in their natural armor. Failure adds a level of fatigue until the character rests and consumes a day's ration of water. Bone and Stone. Because these settings typically have a lack of materials available, they will get creative when making weapons and potentially use bone and stone for the materials. If your weapons are made of bone or stone, they're going to be more prone to breaking. As a result, if a damage roll aces the weapon die, not the strength die, the weapon breaks unless the player spins a benny. If a player critically fails on an attack with a bone or stone weapon, it also breaks unless they spend a benny, hence the reason for dumb luck. Defiling. Defiling magic always has an added trapping of life destruction. Casting a defiling spell destroys all vegetation or animals smaller than a rat for a radius around the caster of a number of feet equal to the power point cost of the spell cast. Anyone making a successful spell casting check can detect a filing magic for eight hours after the spell was cast. And lastly, Class Edge. All characters start with an additional free Class Edge per the rule in Pathfinder for Savage Worlds. Races of the Wasteland. While I was creating the different player character races, I leaned heavily on those that were presented in the Fantasy Companion. With that said, I wanted everything to be a little bit more powerful, like they are in the Pathfinder setting for Savage Worlds. So I used all of the basic races from the Fantasy Companion and upscaled them to a four-point version that was more reflective of the specific types of these that I would like to see in my post-apocalyptic sci-fantasy desert campaign. So, with the Wasteland Dwarf, I left him with low light vision, gave him reduced pace still, still gave him tough, but added strong. For the Wasteland Elf, I continued to give him agile. I also added intelligent, left him with low light vision, and frail. For the Wasteland Half-Elf, I gave him Agile, gave him a starting survival skill of D6, low light vision, and frail. For the Wasteland Halfling, who may or may not like to dine on his fellow party members if the occasion arose, I gave him Agile, Wise, Size, Reduced Pace, and starting Athletics and Stealth skills of D6 to reflect the halfling's natural ability to throw stones and also surprise others. The wasteland humans are going to be adaptable, giving them a free edge, and I gave them what I call expertise, increasing any one attribute. Half dwarves, not found in many settings, I gave tough, strong, brawny, which not listed here, but also gives additional benefits for carrying heavy objects, and unlikable, which is something that I created, and it's a minus two to persuasion rolls. The half giant, I would just use straight from the Fantasy Companion, page 19 of that book. Mantis Man, 
I would have extra limbs, which would reduce the multi-action penalty by two. Natural armor of two. I'd give him a claw or bite availability with a d4 plus strength damage. Make him a major outsider. Give him unusual body shape, which would cause restrictions on what clothing and armor he could use. Take away the need to sleep altogether and make him agile. And then give him hungry, which is custom. It's based on the driven hindrance and it is specific to his drive to need to hunt and eat. One thing that I didn't mention for my post-apocalyptic sci-fantasy savage world's conversion was the bestiary. This is because I think it is best as left to your own devices. First, you can find comps for the type and use them for benchmarks. Keep it simple. Don't stat what doesn't need to be statted. Just keep to the skills and uh, attributes that you're going to be interacting with. Third, use psionics sparingly, but when you do, use them for impact. And remember, it's very common in this genre for any enemy to have psionics. Four, lizards, bugs, and other different desert beasties of all shapes and sizes are perfect for this type of a setting. You can use any of those that are already in the Savage Worlds Fantasy Companion, the Pathfinder for Savage Worlds Bestiary, or any that you've already created. Five, the two-legged enemies are the most common and the most dangerous. Just create them like you would an enemy for any other Savage World setting and throw an occasional psionic power via the gifted edge, and you're good to go. There it is. That's my take on the genre using Savage Worlds. Other than the Savage Worlds core rule book, the Fantasy Companion, and the Pathfinder for Savage Worlds core rule book, another very handy thing to pick up for your own conversion would be the Dark Sun box set, which you can pick up as a reprint from Drive Through RPG, which includes the entire box set in one softbound or hardbound book for about 20 bucks. Of course, you can still get copies of the old box set, but they're a little bit more pricey. This has been a fun project. I hope that it's been helpful for you and your table. And if you want to take my version for a spin, shoot me an email over at booksbricksandboards at gmail.com and I'll send that out, no worries. Until next time, this has been Justin from Books, Bricks, and Boards. Good gaming and God bless.